All right, guys. So today we are talking about putting it all together and figuring out what type of investments you want to go after and really what we call in the real estate space as your buy box. So a buy box is a tool that is used by real estate investors like us. Remember to identify yourself as a real estate investor to really determine and put out there into the world and to show people essentially what your buying criteria is, what your criteria is for purchasing properties. It's really important that other people understands and knows what your criteria is so that when those deals are popping up and maybe you're not on social media, maybe you're out or maybe, you know, you can have an assistant or someone just looking for these deals for you. They're always looking for these deals and then they're like, oh, wait, Brandon is looking for X, Y, Z. Let me send this to them. Let me screenshot it and send them or let me tag them on Facebook because I know what their buy box is. I know the area that they're buying in. So a couple of things with buy boxes that you want to think about that is really could help you structure this is really um, the location. I would start with location. What location do you want to invest in? This is really important as real estate investors because it's going to kind of determine your geographical area, where you want to invest in. And, you know, it could determine other things. But most important is your location. You want to you want to outline that. So. Are you investing in Richmond, Virginia? Are you investing in, um, I don't know, like somewhere in Louisiana or Houston, Texas or Austin, Texas or Minneapolis, Minnesota, right? Are you, you know, what city and what state are you investing in? It could be, you know, very small, like, you know, really well-defined. Like, for instance, like there is a builder that we work with um, and they only do like the specific triangle and they only build homes in those like neighborhoods in those few zip codes. And they don't go outside of that. They don't care. Like even though they could make the same amount of money going outside of that, they don't that like their buy box and their building criteria is in that triangle and they will not leave it um, as of right now. So your location is so important. Also, I want you guys to think about, you know, long term, right? What does this look like? How many properties am I going to have in this location? What is my long term goal or is it more so like, hey, I'll buy any deal in the state, right? Um, but think about like, you know, management. You don't want to be known as the star investor where you got a property in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You got one in L.A. You got one in Austin. You got one in Tampa. You got one in, you know, New York, you know, because managing all that without the right team could be really difficult. So it's always best to kind of hyper focus and stay hyper local and then kind of branch out. And you might form like, you know, different clusters. You might say like, hey, I will, um, I will, um, you know, start a cluster here in the D.C. area. And then as that grows, I'm going to look to Tampa because maybe I want to live in Tampa. Right. Um, so I'm, then I'm going to start investing in Tampa. And, and then that allows you to start growing another cluster there. Um, so there was a there's there's a method here I want to talk to you guys about. It's called the uh, Kmart versus Walmart um, method. And essentially what it was, was so Kmart looked at being in every major city. They just wanted to be in every major city. They didn't care about, you know, logistics or whatever. And they just started putting dots, right? So like every major city, like New York, Manhattan, like, um, you know, like Minneapolis, Minnesota, like LA, Tampa, you know, Miami, um, you know, Charlotte, wherever, right? So they had this like spot map, like all over the U S right. And the difference is like Walmart, what they actually did was they started looking at how fast we can get a truck from one location to another. So they did the spot map, but they also branched out. So they were like, okay, well let's pick, um, I don't know, like Martinsburg, West Virginia. Right. And that then we're going to start growing out. And then we're like, okay, so from Martinsburg, we can have a truck in Winchester, Virginia, you know, like 45 minutes, um, or whatever. And then like from there, then like, let's pick front Royal Virginia. So then we can get a truck from, you know, um, from Winchester to front Royal in 30 minutes or whatever. But they looked at the routes. They looked at the logistics behind this. And I want you guys to think about the logistic behind managing these properties. And, you know, moral of the story is you see where Kmart is today, non-existent and you see where Walmart is. So, you know, I want you guys to think about that now. Um, Location is really important. Um, it's also going to kind of determine your class of properties, class A, B, C, D kind of thing. But 
The other thing you want to think about is property type. So are you looking at apartment complexes? Are you looking at single family homes? Are you looking at um, townhomes, condos, duplexes, four units, eight units, right? Like what are you looking at? Are you looking at storage units? So this is where you get to determine like what your property type is. This is really important because it's going to determine a few other things, which is the next thing, price point. So price point is also really important, right? Like you have a budget. We just went through this, you, you know, like depending on where you're starting at, you know, is it 6,000 like my buddy or is it, you know, like $100,000? Are you going to do a HELOC on your house? So you got to think about your price range of what you're buying in and then, you know, judge that back, right? Like, so are you going to say, well, you know what? I've got only a hundred thousand dollar budget for a property right now. So I kind of have to choose a different area, right? Cause maybe you want to invest in, you know, um, Tampa, but you know, average property prices in Tampa is like way above your budget. So you're like, you know what? I'll go to Louisiana just for the time being short period. And once I develop enough cash flow or enough equity, I could cash in on that and then I can exit. Right. And then the next thing you want to think about is your investment strategy. Are you doing the burst strategy? Are you doing fix and flip? Are you doing traditional investing method? Um, you, you know, like, are you specifically buying at 1% rule? Are you, you, you know, like looking at subject to, or, you know, owner financing properties only. So these are all key to determining like what you're doing. And again, like, you know, when you start geographically and you kind of start working your way down, it really helps you to, you know, go back. Right. So like, you know, for instance, like does a flip, do I even have flip opportunities in Tampa or Jacksonville or wherever you might be investing, you know, are there burst strategies? Are there even storage units in your town? Right. Those kind of things. So you want to ask yourself those questions before, and they kind of help determine like each other. Right. And then you want to determine the property size, right? Property size is really important because when you get into multifamily space, managing a four unit versus a 50 unit is a much different beast. Like it's a, it's a project, right? So you want to think about these things. You want to like figure out like, man, is it, you know, like what, what's my management style? Like how much can I manage? That's the key. You want to make sure that you have the ability to manage it. You have some experience and I'm not telling you like, Hey, go out there and buy like a hundred unit. You, you never, you never bought real estate before like don't do it right. Like, or, or hire the right team, hire the right people that will do it. Um, another thing you want to think about is like, you know, are you, you know, like is, is the size okay in my town? Like, especially if you're doing building, like maybe part of your buy box is like buying land. Um, what's your formula for buying land? Is What's your location? What's the source? Like, that's the other thing is like, do I only want to buy off market? Do I care about buying off market or on market? If you're doing the burst strategy, it really shouldn't matter. Um, you know, if you're buying land, like, are you expecting a certain acreage? Um, if you're buying multifamily, are you looking for a certain zoning? Right? So these are all things that you can kind of really get into, um, to determine like, what is the best fit for me? Right. Um, and then like, you can start getting into really minute details, right? So you can say, you know what, I'm, I only want to do like two bedrooms plus, um, it's got to have one and a half baths. It's got to be above a certain square footage. Um, it's got to have a garage, got to have a quarter acre lot. Um, you know, the house has to be, you know, 1800 square foot. Like those are all things that you could put into your buy box. Like you create this, you buy, you create this criteria because that's what you see yourself managing and, and really maintaining like over time. So think about what your buy box is and really what you want to put into it. You can um, choose whatever you want to put into it or really like choose what you don't want to put into it, right? So think about it both ways and, and see what you like. You can make it as detailed as you want or you can be as relaxed as you want. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how like what a buy box kind of looks like and I'll show you guys an example.